Autism is the fastest rising developmental disorder worldwide, which now affects 1 in 59 children just in the United States. While the exact cause of autism remains unclear, we know that both genetics and environment play a role. But having said this, our genetics haven't changed very much in the last 50 years. But our environment, and especially our diet, has. Over the last decades, more and more studies were published that show a really interesting connection between our microbiome and autism. So let's talk about it today. The whole topic spiked my interest after watching an episode of the Canadian documentary The Nature of Things, which describes the case of Andrew Balti. Andrew developed normal until the age of one, but then received six courses of antibiotics due to an ear infection that turned out to be no ear infection. While still on antibiotics, Andrew's behavior changed and he became completely withdrawn. Andrew was eventually classified as severely autistic and showed symptoms like toe walking and avoiding eye contact. Andrew's mom, Ellen, decided to do some research on her own and started to connect Andrew's GI tract problems, something many children with autism suffer from, with his overuse of antibiotics. Ellen eventually developed the hypothesis that during the course of antibiotics that wiped out all of Andrew's beneficial gut bacteria, harmful ones took over, like for instance Clostridium species, that are resistant to most antibiotics. However, as a matter of fact, there is actually one antibiotic that targets these Clostridium species and is usually used as a last resort. Ellen could fortunately convince a physician to try it on Andrew. In a matter of just a few weeks, Andrew improved drastically. And this observation actually initiated the setup of a bigger study that then included 10 children with autism. And during the treatment, 8 of the 10 children actually improved significantly. However, as we can see in this figure here, 2 months after the treatment was stopped, most kids regressed again. And this was also true for Andrew. The reason for this is that Clostridium forms spores and there is no known antibiotic that can kill these spores. And once the treatment is stopped, it just starts to colonize the gut again. Now, about 19 years after the previous study was published, there is a lot of research going on connecting the microbiome with autism. And researchers, for instance, found that those species are generally decreased in people with autism, and these species are generally increased. But what seems to be even more important than the microbiome composition is the role of metabolites, so molecules produced by our microbiome. A 2018 study found that the microbiome of children with autism produces different metabolites, and the researchers observed significantly higher isopropanol levels, which the researchers classified as a neurotoxic organic solvent that contributes to central nervous system and respiratory depression. So in other words, metabolites produced by our gut microbiome can reach our central nervous system where they can cause damage to neurons or affect neurotransmission in some way. Another good example here would be the neurotransmitter GABA, which usually stimulates calmness. And researchers found that GABA is also generally decreased in children with autism. I think the evidence is clearly showing that there is a strong connection between our microbiome and the development of autism. And thanks to our new understanding, there are now microbiome-based treatments that show unprecedented success in treating autism. A new technique called microbiome transfer therapy was shown to be highly effective in changing the microbiome and reducing symptoms of autism. In this study, 18 participants underwent the microbiome transfer therapy that includes pretreatment with a clostridium killing antibiotic vancomycin, a bowel cleanse, stomach acid suppressants, and fecal microbiota transfer daily for 7 to 8 weeks. The study was first evaluated after 8 weeks, so after the daily microbiome transfer has stopped, and the researchers saw a clear improvement in the severity of autism. And even a 2 years follow up showed a further improvement. So unlike the previous studies, where most children regressed after the treatment was stopped. In this new study, at baseline, more than 80% suffered from severe symptoms. But two years later, 44% of the participants were below the ASD diagnostic cutoff. The researchers also observed a clear increase in bifidobacteria and prevotella after the treatment that remained elevated even after two years. 
However, most shockingly about this graph is really that there were no measurable Prevotella species before the treatment. There are many proposed mechanisms on how the microbiome can lead to the development of autism. And we have already touched on the role of metabolites that enter the brain and wreak havoc. More good evidence along this line comes from Dr. McFabe here, who injects mice with certain metabolites he found to be upregulated in people with autism. And he observes that the mice develop autistic characters shortly after the injection until the effect wears off. Another potential mechanism on how the microbiome can lead to autism is via inflammation, or more specifically, neuroinflammation. I discuss how an unhealthy microbiome can lead to neuroinflammation in a different video, so check it out next if you like. A recent review also summarizes how an early disruption of the microbiome leads to a decreased antioxidant capacity and epigenetic changes and its implication in autism. So epigenetics describe how certain genes are expressed. And over the last years, research has shown us that epigenetic changes have probably more control over our health than our genes. All right, while the mechanism is still under debate, I think the evidence has become pretty strong that at least in some cases, autism starts in the gut. Here's the video that discusses how a leaky gut can lead to neuroinflammation. YouTube thinks that you might like this video, also, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. Thank you for watching and see you next time.